Anna, are you host? Okay, please make the other co host. I'm okay, we're all set. What is that? I can't make this.
evening, everybody. Um, welcome to tonight's webinar, Uplifting Black Sisterhood for Supportive Essence and Librarianship. Tonight, our moderator will be Brenda Johnson Perkins, and Brenda is the um, BCLA Executive Secretary, and she is also the, a librarian and adult services coordinator for the Baltimore County Public Library. Um, she received her MLS from the University of Maryland at College Park. Um, she's a Spectrum Scholar, um, a Maryland Library Leadership Institute graduate, a member of the Maryland Library Association's Equity and Diversity Task Force, and, and the Executive Secretary for BCLA. Take it away, Brenda. Thank you so much, Michelle. Welcome everyone to our program. Thank you for that introduction, Michelle, and I would like to let everyone know a little bit about you as well. Michelle Fenton is a catalog librarian at the Indiana State Library in Indianapolis, Indiana. She received her MLS from the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. She's a 2016 IFLA IMLS fellow and served as the co-editor of the NCAL 9 conference proceedings. In addition, she is the assistant secretary of BCALL. She's doing a wonderful job. And she's a member of the Indiana Black Librarians Network, ALA, and the IFLA Library History Special Interest Group. Welcome, welcome, Michelle. Welcome. So it's Women's History Month, and we wanna thank our audience for being here with us. This is an opportune time to celebrate Black womanhood, our achievement and challenges. According to the Center for Disease Control, more than half of the women living with AIDS are Black. Black women are more likely to face imprisonment than their white counterparts and black women continue to face inequities, discrimination and microaggressions in the workforce. And of course we know there are numerous studies that show the correlation between the stress produced by racism and depression, anxiety and trauma. So in tonight's discussion, we invite our audience from any position in which you serve in the workforce and from any role that you serve in the library to explore with us the question of whether black, sister black sisterhood, our relationships with each other can be a tool of our mutual empowerment and liberation. That being said, let me introduce our esteemed panel. M. Claire Knowles. Dr. Knowles has enjoyed a long and distinguished career as an academic professional, earning her PhD degree in library and information science in 1988. That same year, she became the first African-American assistant dean of student affairs at Simmons College. She has served on numerous boards and committees in support of scholarship and the advancement of the library profession and been a tireless student advocate. She is a lifetime member of ALA, an active member of BCALA, and the 2020 winner of the ALA Equality Award for lifetime work on issues surrounding equity, diversity, and inclusion. Welcome, Dr. Knowles. Deloitte Holiday is a tenured, tenured library faculty at the Indiana University Library's Bloomington campus in Bloomington, Indiana. Ms. Holliday received her MLS from Indiana University. She currently serves as the collection manager for African American and African Diaspora Studies, Multicultural Outreach Librarian, and head Neil Marshall Black Culture Center Library. Ms. Holliday has been a member of the American Library Association, the Association of College and Research Libraries, the Black Caucus of the American Library Association, the Indiana Black Librarians Network, and the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. She's published, published book chapters, encyclopedia entries, and articles on diversity and cultural competency in libraries. Welcome to Lois Holliday. Fayreen Muhammad. Fayreen Johnson Muhammad recently retired as assistant director of Rockford Public Library in Rockford, Illinois. She has a master's of science degree in library and information science from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. 
Bayreen has worked in public, academic, and special libraries in Joliet, Warrenville, Evanston, and Rockford, Illinois. Her areas of expertise are reference, research, outreach programming, and managing digital collections. She serves on the executive board of BCALA and is the 2018 winner of the Demco ALA Black Caucus Award for Excellence in Librarianship. Welcome, Fayreen. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you to the, these panelists who've come up. and just talk about it from your observations, from your history, from your lived experience, from your beliefs. What does Black sisterhood mean to you? Am clear with Mrs. Sure. Noah? I'll be awesome? glad to start, yes. Um, recently I saw a, a file magnet that actually showed uh, Michelle Obama and uh, Kamala Harris. And it said, Michelle's statements, I got your back. And I think that's very important about Black women being uh, supportive allies and also showing care and being a resource, a shoulder for Black women, for sisters. Yes, yes. Bayreen? Oh, sure. Uh, for me, of course, I agree with M. Claire and exactly what she said. Before that, thank you all so much for blessing me with this opportunity to serve on this panel among all of my mentors and mentees and all of these women that I've admired for I don't know how long. Thank you, it's exciting. So for me, Black sisterhood is treating other Black women as you would treat your blood sister and as you would treat yourself, wanting for them what you want for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's women who inspire, encourage, and empower each other. And while we know sometimes we don't always get along, but we know just like we would with our blood sister, sometimes you just don't get along. And maybe you stop speaking with each other for a little time, mm -hmm. but you just know you have her back. If somebody should come to do anything that they may cause any harm or any hurt at all, you're going to be there for her and she'll be there for you. And to me, that's what Black sisterhood is. Yes, and we welcome our audience to contribute by putting your ideas of sisterhood in the chat as we move along. Delois Holiday, what does it, well, what does it mean to you? Oh, you have to unmute. Unmute yourself, dear. Wait a minute, thank you so much. Um, there are some elements um, to Black sisterhood, I believe, um, and I think they include um, camaraderie that Black women have for one another, uh, support in a number of ways, including uh, financial, educational, emotional support, um, and as everyone else has said, having each other's back. Um, I think um, working to advance women causes and supporting women's equality in a man dominated society, as well as in, um, in a white women's dominated profession. So black sisterhood is women working together, helping and serving one another. Yes, yes, yes. And I, and I echo that, Deloitte, that it's definitely for me standing up for each other in a world that doesn't always stand up for us. So Michelle, do you have a definition of sisterhood you would like to share? Yeah, um, any, any, any type of wisdom from life experience passing it down, because a lot of people, you can't learn everything in school. Sometimes you just have to learn from those who came before you their life experience, their struggles, how they dealt with stuff. That's my definition of sisterhood. Love that, love it. Thank you all um, for those wonderful definitions. And um, yes, we're, we're all speaking the same language when we talk about the levels of support 
and that we offer each other as black women. And it's amazing that we have been able to do so in spite a challenging history. Um, we cannot discuss black sisterhood without looking at how black women and black female bodies have been misused and maligned since the 18th century. And I would like um, Delois Holliday to um, discuss with us um, the historical relevance and significance of black womanhood in America. Okay. Um, well, first, first I'd like to give you um, a definition of uh, black womanhood, my definition of black womanhood. And I believe black womanhood is accepting the responsibility of sustaining a race of people who have been oppressed and discriminated against since enslavement. It is the glue of our race. While black sisterhood to me means um, it's accepting of your responsibility and membership into a group that will need to survive by supporting each other in a continued endeavor to achieve collective rights within a country that has not always accepted us nor given us a fair chance. And I, I paused there for a moment because um, has not always accepted us probably should mean have never accepted us nor given us a fair chance. Um, I would like to talk about um, black women in, in um, as, as, as black women, we in America have had to stand together to survive in the United States. Um, there are specific areas where this become critical and among them are civil rights, education, social, and social justice. These are the three major ones, I think. And um, Black Sister, the Black Sister that I want to talk about a little bit is uh, Ida B. Wells, who, who, who said, and uh, she was one of the founding members of the National Association of Colored Women. And their motto, I believe, is still living with us today, and we and we should we should embrace it, which was lifting as we climb. And I think we should just all embrace that sentiment. Um, but also, speaking of what's happening into in the world today, um, Ida B. Wells also wrote. Um, numerous books, but one of the books that she wrote was called uh, The United States uh, Atrocities Lynch Laws. And another one was called On Lynching. And I looked at these two in particular because um, Black women, as I said, was the, is the glue of the, uh, the Black family. But these folks were women and girls have been molested, uh, raped, tortured, um, killed by um, black mobs um, in, the, in the 18th, 19th century. And also it's still happening today. What happened to Breonna Taylor and others. So we are still being molested, killed, simply for being black. I didn't want to take you back too far because I think we should just stay in a, in a little era where we can look at it within our time constraints tonight. But um, the lynching of black people in, in particular, Black women, and Black women had to stand together in these times, but um, the lynchings by white supremacists, just like being shot, being
these days by white supremacists. Um, most of these girls and women, it was a, an alleged crime, right? They were, they were accused of poisoning the, the families. They were accused of, 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 of stealing from the families. And these were all lynching offenses, right? And uh, I just couldn't uh, imagine being there. And, in, and the women who resisted the sexual advances of these white men um, or also um, these alleged crimes were political activism, uh, such as registering the vote, these people were killed for that, organizing labor um, uh, movements and labor laws and labor uh, equity. Sassing white men was a, an offense. And of course, resisting their sexual advances. Um, these, yeah. So I, I wanted to, to just focus on that a little bit and, and give you a few titles to, to reread if you have not read them before. So the United States uh, Atrocities Lynch Laws on Lynching. Uh, my good friend and colleague, uh, Audrey McCluskey, wrote a book called a Forgotten Sisterhood, Pioneering Black Women Educators and Activists uh, in the Jim Crow South. And in this, she mentions Mary Church Terrell, Ida B. Wells, and others who, who, um, who, who uh, brought women together and lifted them up. Uh, some of the things that uh, women were, these groups did, some of them were called clubs and some of them were called associations, but primarily what happened was these sisters provided training and scholarships. They built libraries, they offered daycare for children of working mothers. They offered housing for single working women who were, who were not allowed to live at the uh, segregated YWCAs. So uh, going back to the uh, turn of the century, um, we, we just focus and look at those sisters and try for ourselves to look at them at, as mentors and try to emulate what they did so many years ago. Thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah, so we have come from a legacy of pain in which we have rose above it to show our strength and show our unity with other Black women. Um, so it's very important it's to, to know where we came from so we can understand why we struggle with the concept of sister, sisterhood today. Um, under slavery, not only were we forced to maintain slave capitalism by birthing children into slavery, we also endured a system of oppression that separated black women from our biological mothers, sisters, children, and other black women based on complexion, which has fueled colorism that exists today and all of the oppression has colored our, our movement through society today. We can, we can understand the lasting impact of, of black female oppression on us social, socially and psychologically. So let's explore this landscape that we are navigating within more specifically in modern times. I would like to ask the participants and, the, and the, the audience and the panel to brainstorm the challenges that black women face as library professionals in all areas and levels of the profession and in the professional world in general, wherever you may listen, be listening from tonight. 
what are the challenges that signal the continued need for black sisterhood? What is happening to us at, in the world of work? What are we experiencing? And I'm, I want the audience to answer that question in the chat. And, and Michelle Fenton is going to share some of your, the items. And I also want us to discuss it as a panel. Sure, what? I'll be. I'll begin. Um, having had a long history, um, I believe in predominantly white institutions, or as they're called, uh, their um, the initialism is PWIs. I think it's always been an issue about getting gaining the respect and being understood for who you are. Uh, again, similar to what Brenda has outlined about, you know, it could be your looks, the way you look. Uh, your hairstyle, uh, body piercings, um, gender identification, you know, and, and if we can get that kind of support from others outside of race, we should get that understanding um, and respect from those in our own, in our own um, ethnic group, or more specifically of other African-American women. And I would say that the best way is how we challenge that is that we meet with other black sisters who work, whether or not they're other professionals, whether or not they're other workers in the library, you want to make sure you have a bond uh, with other black sisters in, the, in your work community. And it's so important to have that because you never know what some other white librarian may have said in front of a uh, library paraprofessional and who could come back and share that information with you. That's mm -hmm. why it's a, it's a bonding opportunity. Um, and also for the professional librarian looking for other opportunities to raise up um, mm -hmm. to library paraprofessionals. Uh, I think when you have the opportunity, think about nominating other sisters for mm -hmm. opportunities to work on committees. Uh, just recently, uh, I was just reading about Senator Duckworth, who's an Asian American from, um, from the Midwest and how she stated after the uh, hate crimes on Asians, she said, unless there's going to be uh, other candidates of Asian Americans, I'm going to vote just for Asian people. So I'm not, I'm willing to support President Biden, but you got to show me that there are other capable mm -hmm. uh, Asian candidates. And I think we all have the responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure that we support our candidates who are of African descent, our sisters, as they're looking for opportunities to move up into the library profession, up in the library, uh, up in the, you know, in a larger community, mm -hmm. always think about how you can support each other. And I guess we have to regain as black women, blacks as sisters, we got to remember how to be confident in front of others. And okay. we have to gain that support from other people saying, you got a strength, build on that strength, you know, always encouraging each other and lifting them up, as we've heard um, our former speaker has said. Yes. Um, so you touched on a lot of difficulties that we're having. Um, one of them is the, the um, difficulty in just being yourself at work in terms of wearing your hair wraps, wearing natural hair. Um, what other specific challenges are we facing? Are we, I mean, I have experienced a lot of things in my 21 career. Uh, and um, yes, it has, it has at times challenged my sense of self and my sense of self-esteem when I'm at the information desk and a customer comes up and I'm the black librarian, but the white customers are all going mm -hmm. to the white librarian or they're coming to me asking, where is the librarian? I need to speak to a librarian like the kinds of assumptions and that have been made. It has been painful. Um, I just wanna add, okay, I've been in the profession for 46 years, really almost 48. Mm -hmm. And those same questions I had too, way back when, 
when I was the young black librarian, the white male librarian could have been my father sitting next to me and you know, had the same questions. Where's the librarian? Or when the black questions came up, like what's the date of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday? That was the black question. It's like anybody could have answered that question. Exactly. At, but that at, was the black question. Right, at Indiana University, um, reference desk often, you know, because we have the library program. Uh, for years, we had a library school, but now we just have a library program within the School of Informatics. But I would be at the reference desk, and I'm the only professional librarian at the desk. And when the students would come, they would go to the student, the student employee who's training with me to become a professional librarian. And often those um, white students, male or female, would have to say, you know, they would defer, you need to speak with Deloitte because she's the librarian. But they would almost always, and I'm from a PWI as well. And so almost always they would go directly to that white uh, professional at the desk instead of the, and I know, and we, Often would have our name tags on with with librarian. Yeah, on. on it, but just to make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that hasn't changed. That was, you know, um, I'm I'm a little bit uh, less than you, uh, M. Claire. I uh, for me, it's been 27 years, I think. And 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 within that whole 27 years, it's been that way. Mm. Fabian, you were going to say something? Yes, I was going to say the more things change, the more they actually stay the same. And in all of my years, too, and I probably have been almost 20 plus years, my experience at the desk, of course, has been the same as you have said now. But in addition to that, sometimes when people come to the reference desk and they ask a question clearly directed at me, my colleagues will almost dive over to the other side to take the question. And sometimes the people will say, well, I'm asking this librarian, you know, they'll kind of point their face toward me to answer the question. Exactly. And uh, sometimes they may stand back, you know, whatever. And then another time they may ask a question of them and they actually don't know the response. And then I will respond with the answer. And then later on, and I've actually had one colleague who apologized, well, I'm so sorry. I thought there was something that, you know, I could answer and I apologize for intervening in the transaction. It's, that's, that's a microaggression. It's a microaggression. And that's why I said these things yeah. are still happening. And that just strengthens the reasoning for us to empower each other and to stick together, to work together and to share these kinds of things. And one other thing too is to reach outside of the library because there are other people of color and other professions that you can join with in your community. In my community, you know, it's not that many of us here in the whole city. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for us to network together mm -hmm. and we do. And we share our time together. We talk about these types of things and experiences that we have in all of our different uh, fields. And then we also get together to have fun and support each other because self-care is very important as well. Yes, it can be really stressful. Michelle, did yes. you have something that you wanted to share just about negative yeah. challenges? Um, yeah, I remember when I was in library school, we would, in some of our class work, we would have to get together in groups and we would talk about something. I know me and some other librarians, library students of color, we would say something and sometimes whoever the group we would just just ignore us like we didn't even say anything. But fortunately, you know, we just kept speaking up and then other people in the group noticed and said, hey, you know, Michelle said something, you know, just dealing with that at the library school level already. Mm -hmm. There is a certain sense of invisibility, especially when you contribute an idea and no one says anything. And then a white person says the very same thing and people are congratulating the person. Oh, that's a great idea. And it's what you just stated. And don't give you credit for it. 
you know, it would be better if somebody at least gave you credit. And that's what we have to remember about our, our sisters and, and our brothers, too. When, they, when somebody says something, always remember to give them credit. Again, it's about lifting them up to let them know it wasn't just your idea. Mm -hmm. Or be you got to speak up, show confidence. I said the same thing. Then you all mm -hmm. didn't listen to me. Well, you know, I, I'll just share real quickly that once, and, and I can't even remember what it was now, but I had a brilliant idea. I talked it over with my supervisor, right? And she was like, oh, that's a brilliant idea. We go to our uh, meeting, right? The librarian's meeting once a week or, yeah, once a week. And she presented my idea in that meeting and I was shocked and, 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 I, and I called her on it. I said, no, that was, I, that was my idea. And she told me, um, uh, you cannot copyright an idea. She said, you cannot copyright an idea. You can't, you know, yes, it was your idea, but she didn't even give me a chance to present it. She, she just jumped the gun and presented it to me before I did. And so I don't know if that was a microaggression. That was just like, mm -hmm. it was, it was, yeah. Thanks. So. It was huge. It was. Wow. So, you, so she just took my idea, you know, and I just, and I told her, I was like, well, you can have that one because I have many more. <laughs> Good for you. But I mean, yeah, it, it does, it does work on you and it is stressful and it causes a sense of, of self-defeat of, to when the incidences are happening in different ways over and over. And it's almost like you are questioning yourself. Did that really happen? You know, so I think that's where we come into the yeah. sisterhood too, to be validated that yes, it did happen and it was racism and it's wrong. So to have someone to validate you is, is extremely important as well. Mm -hmm. So moving on, um, do we have anything in the chat? Yeah, um, a participant said that she says that she has had her white assistant to sabotage her efforts of building community programs. Mm -hmm. And then I see another person said that um, it's actually a question. Um, when you experience microaggressions in a white space, things that mess with your emotions, how can you keep a level head when things like that happen? And then let's see, anybody else say anything? I, I would like to say to that one, you, everybody has emotions and if need be, and I have done it, I've gone to somebody, called somebody on the phone, say, can we meet on campus? Cause I need to holler, I need to cry. And then, you know, help them to develop a strategy to go back mm -hmm. and, and deal I hate to say level-headed, but you know, dry-eyed, perhaps that would be a better mm -hmm. way of seeing. Dry-eyed, go back and defend yourself. Right, because- and, some, and one more other thing, sometimes we need to find white allies to, to pull their coattail to say, you know what you said or what you did was an, was, um, an it was a, um, inappropriate um, act act against a black sister, you know, or against you. Yeah, we have one more. Um, somebody wrote, um, this is a very important talk for black females. How do we begin to teach black women to understand the importance of respecting each other and lifting, lifting up rather than fighting against each other? Well, that's a very good question because it's us to our Again, head. I would say we have to recognize, you know, what's happening is that we don't all have, black women don't all have the same historical um, background anymore. Uh, having mm -hmm. lived in, mm -hmm. in Massachusetts, I had to learn that, you know, there are African-Americans, um, there are newly arrived Africans, there are 
Caribbean people whose experience are different and they relate differently. And this is how you learn how to get to know each other on an individual basis. Take them out to coffee. Just find out what their back pain is. Is this gonna be an ally? Also remember, as much as we, we wanna believe everybody is in our corner, is our sister, they may not be. We have to pick and choose who are our allies, who are our sisters, who are our brothers. So, but there, there is, there is a, a, lot, a layer of mistrust that I think comes out between Black women. Because Competition. Have, yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what are some of the, the manifestations of racism that we're seeing come out, come, come to play in terms of our relationships to, be, to each other. What are we seeing in the, in that, that's happening between us? Um, um, what, is, what, are, what factors are preventing Black women from being sisters to each other? What is keeping us apart? And I think competition is, is a good point. And I think that the, the sense of competition is fueled by being in a ra racist work environment at times and trying to keep the position that you struggle so hard to maintain and using so much of your energy to do that, that you don't have the, the energy to mentor, to raise someone else up, to, you know, it just, you, you're so concerned about keeping, surviving and keeping your own head above the water. So yes, definitely. What other things I, are we seeing? I think there, I think there's uh, jealousy I think there's some envy and definitely lack of trust. And I really don't believe that we can truly be friends and colleagues to each other because of, of those factors. And as in Claire said, um, competition. And sometimes that competition can be for a position. Like we, at our institution right now, we have the Dean of Libraries position open, there's going to be competition for that position. Sometimes it's about salaries, scarcity of monies. Um, how much can you do to get your salary raised, you know? Um, and um, there's some fear of, of, I think, hanging out with the wrong people. Um, and all of those, I think, are fat, uh, factors in um, from keeping us from coming together. Definitely. Um, let's, let's, let's continue the discussion and talk some more about the factors that divide us. But mm. uh, in the meantime, let's, let's go to a survey question for our audience to assess the role of sisterhood in the lives of the audience members. Um, so we have a question here. Is sisterhood, and by sisterhood we mean bonding and support with women outside your biological family, a reliable active force in your professional life? That, that was a question. Yes. Yeah. Could you repeat? Well, it, 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 it's a question for us to, um, to think about, mm -hmm. but this is a question that we're just asking the audience. Oh, okay. Is sisterhood bonding and support with women that's bonding and support with women outside of your biological family? That's, that's a quick definition for sisterhood. Is that a reliable active force in your professional life? Are you using the concept of sisterhood to move forward in your professional life? So the, the poll results are coming through, but um, if we're not, then I do think that there are some reasons why, like what we are stating, competition, jealousy, um, focusing on your own survival, and also, um, I think another issue is that sometimes we don't give 
each other a chance. Like you got one chance to cross me. And once you cross me, then that's it. Like, I don't try again with you. I don't open the door of communication anymore with you. I don't extend an olive branch. And I think that sometimes we can just be too severe and critical, maybe. I agree. With I, I would like to address again about the whole issue about competition mm -hmm. and the one chance. Mm -hmm. For competition, I, I think it's so important to go to our sisters and say, I'm not in competition with you, okay. if it's possible. You mm -hmm. know, thinking about um, what I would try to do with my staff and colleagues um, at, at Simmons University was to find opportunities to nominate them for awards. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we don't do enough of that. And I think even in the BCALA has had, you know, at times we hear the announcement for awards here and people don't forget about it, you know, because it's sort of like somebody, I want somebody to nominate me. Well, why don't you think about nominating somebody else? Exactly. Um, and I think that is really important to say, I'm finding your strengths and I think it would be good for you to get this award personally, but also it brings, um, <clears throat> it brings pride and uh, for, and, uh, for our library, for our library school. You know, so those are the ways that we can get away with it is when people say, I'm looking to support you in various ways so that you see, I'm not just in competition with you. You know, I'm in competition with the world for the betterment of our team. Um, about the other statement, now I'm of age, I said I was gonna talk about the second topic, you don't have to run mine, what was I gonna talk about? Um, about um, extending giving, the olive branch, giving that second chance, giving that second chance. Okay, that I'm gonna give you one chance. That to me is a white man act. That that mm -hmm. that is a practice that I would work with my staff, and I told them. And because uh, I, I would have white women say that, I'm going to tell you this one time and that's it, you better get it. Mm -hmm. But no, I would tell my staff, you ask me the same question over and over again until I figure out different ways to help you understand it. And I would pray, and this is something that I, I pray for all the time, patience. I believe in patience. I'm always trying to have patience because we all learn in different ways you know so I, I am opposed to that I'm gonna give you that one chance no you know I might give you and about I'm gonna tell you I've had to let people go in other words exclude them from the LIS program fire people from my staff that you know it's like I gave them several chances but I mean if it's learning about a digital task uh, you know, it's, it's something that we do every day, you know, I, I usually say, well, you know, just ask me because we only do it like once every three months, the problem, right. you know, the task that someone needs help on, you know, so I think we need to change the way we work with people. That is how we overcome uh, doing things because it's the way the white folks do. Absolutely. We have our poll results. Yes, we do. Um, basically, in regards to the question, 86% of the people who voted said yes, that they do see that sisterhood bonding and support women outside your biological family as a reliable active force in their professional lives, and 14% said no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, racism, these things are divisive. How can we subvert it? What, how can we leverage sisterhood Let's talk to that 14%. What can we do to leverage Black sisterhood in the workplace? We've talked a lot about different things that we can do. What are some other things that we can do? And we can go to the next survey question while we're talking about that. But also I think we have to recognize maybe there are people who actually don't work with other Black, black people. You know, So if you're in a predominantly white institution, maybe there aren't any opportunities. That's one thing. 
Right. Um, you know, one of the comments we have is one of the things I now work with all black staff. And that's where that you learn to appreciate people different, you know, black people as different people and, you know, work with them to be successful. Mm -hmm. What are some ideas, ladies? Um, um, I had read this book by Stacey Abrams, Minority Leader, mm -hmm. How to Lead from the Outside and Make Real Change. And she has this wonderful chapter in here that I want everybody, if you can get a hold of this book and you don't have time to read the whole thing, read her chapter on mentorship. She has a chapter called The Myth of Mentors. And basically what she's stating is that the way we go about seeking a mentor relationship is very overly simplistic. That your mentorship relationships can be varied. They can be situational. They can be people who are at a higher level than you, but they can be people who at a, are at a lower level than you too. And they can be for different reasons. You could have a mentor who's gonna help get you to the next level in your career who has that specific professional knowledge, but you can also have one who's just gonna be the shoulder to cry on. That person who you're gonna go to when you don't wanna blow up and, and, and fulfill the, stereotype of the angry black woman that they have of us so you this is the person you call to calm down to collect yourself so you know to to use your your and, and also what was really wonderful about the chapter is how she explained what your responsibility is in a mentoring relationship you have to come knowing what it is you want from the other person what you and how hard you're willing to work to get from point a to point b and you have to set those guidelines to have a complete mentorship relationship that can really fulfill you and, and get you to where you wanna go. It's, it really begins with you deciding what you want from the relationship. So we have our poll results, Michelle. Okay. Uh, the people who voted 91% said yes, they are sister to others professionally or personally. And 9% said no. Wow. I think there's one other thing too, and that is that it helps if you reach out to people and actually have those conversations with them. And if you feel that for some reason there's distrust or maybe for some reason that they seem distant from you, you know, to just ask the question. I know it can be challenging, Yes. Um, but it's something that needs to be said. And, you know, just think of your sister, if she was just kind of sitting there moping or feeling sad, you would actually go and ask, is, it, uh, you know, is anything wrong? Is there anything I can do to help you? How can I support you? And I'm not your competition, you know, and if you feel that kind of uh, spirit, then, you know, just speak up and say that, you know, of course, if you are actually going for the job, then maybe both of us can like talk a little bit about it and mm -hmm. make a decision. Maybe there's another job that or another position available that maybe after we discuss it, you know, I might feel like, oh, well, that's a better fit for me. And then perhaps then I'll work on that and we can be references for each other. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we just get together and kind of talk about it and try to work through it together you know, hopefully things will work out and at least we would have had the conversation and I think that would make both of us feel a little bit more comfortable. Thank you, Faye. And I, I like how what you said brought out the concept of you making the first move, you making the first positive overture to heal a relationship with, with a fellow coworker who is a black female like yourself. Instead of taking the problem immediately up to, to a man to solve, because it probably is the, the, in our profession, a white woman who's in the management position who's going to solve the problem, or a white man in the position who's going to solve the problem, to, to work together to solve that problem with each other first. And that will require you to make the first move sometimes, even if you feel you're the injured party. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. And I will usually then say, let's both go to the supervisor if needed. Right. Right. 
But often, often in, at a PWI, um, there are so few uh, African American librarians, mm -hmm. uh, so few Asian and Latino uh, librarians, and you are simply assigned a mentor. You know, the the HR department or the dean or somebody in that in a higher position will say, well, we need somebody to bring you along because you have to get through tenure, you got to get promoted and we need you to be with the right people, somebody who can tell you how to craft your, mm -hmm. your professional development so you can, can uh, achieve uh, tenure and promotion. And you don't have a choice, I mean, you really don't have a choice and you have to be strong enough to seek outside people. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, I'll take these people that you assigned to me, but I'm going to talk to somebody you know at another institution mm -hmm. that can help you along. Yes. And, and, and will help you sometimes better than the ones that you've been assigned because they don't know the struggles of black folks. And they really can't, I mean, they can, can tell you to write an article or do some presentations or, you know, th those kinds of things, but they can't tell you how to stay for the long haul. Exactly. Because Black people are leaving the profession. Unfortunately. No. And there are so few Black librarians, but um, I have found a source of inspiration and in, 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 uh, unity in having uh, professional alliance and friendship with the African Americans in the circulation department, the shelter, mm -hmm. the account managers. Mm -hmm. um, and that sometimes is a very, there's a subtle form of racism sometime at work that will discourage you as a librarian from fraternizing in other departments. But I don't think that that's, I think that's racism. And I don't think that you should allow that to stop you from unifying with your people for your mm -hmm. future, people who are going to understand you and uplift you they don't have to be a librarian to do that you can That's do right. that from any walk in the library you can do that so sometimes, yes, have, sometimes okay. you may need to actually you know meet on coffee breaks meet outside of the workplace absolutely um, you know it you don't necessarily want them to know who your kinships or who you're getting information uh, mm -hmm. from on the inside. Because mm -hmm. they're doing it too. You have to remember, mm -hmm. you know, our, our white counterparts are also having socials. Having uh, affinity groups. Yeah. They're, doing they're it. outside, you know, but they're doing it outside. You know, yeah. they're going shopping, they're playing tennis, but they, you know, mm -hmm. and they're sharing information. So we have to do it too. Yes, we do. So there are different things that we can do, um, like starting a Black affinity group, starting a sisterhood circle, meeting on Zoom, after work, sharing books and resources with each other. We have a resource, a wonderful resource list for you. Um, we, our wonderful Michelle Fenton is going to put the, the secretary's emails in the chat so that you can feel free to, to call us to just, if you just wanna chat, generally speaking, we're gonna make sure everybody gets the resource list who is in our audience today. And I don't wanna run out of time to, um, so we have shared the poll results that most of us are being sisters to each other personally and professionally which is a wonderful thing. We hope that the resource list will help you to even further your efforts to do that and to overcome obstacles that you're facing um, in bonding with each other to up level your careers. Um, and we have promised you all a surprise mystery sister. And I just would like to take the time to introduce her to you. 
Our mystery sister is a New York best-selling author and the recipient of the NAACP Award for Outstanding Work of Literary Fiction. Oops, I'm trying to, okay. Of, of Literary Fiction. And she is also the NAACP Image Award nominee for Best Instructional Literary Work for 2021 for The Woman God Created You To Be. And it's Kimberly Lawson Roby. Hello ladies. So I first just want to begin by saying a special thank you to Brenda Johnson Perkins for inviting me to be here, as well as to all of you who are members of the Black Caucus of the American Library Association. I am so truly honored to have this opportunity. And I am of course so excited to know that you are discussing sisterhood and the idea of supporting and celebrating other women. And so to keep in line with your discussions and the conversations that you're having, I thought it would be good to share the three pieces of advice that I left with my listeners at the end of episode seven of my podcast, which is entitled Supporting and Celebrating Other Women. Um, my podcast, the Woman God Created You To Be is actually based on the book that I released last year, which is entitled The Woman God Created You To Be, Finding Success Through Faith, Spiritually, Personally, and Professionally. And so again, I talk about this very thing of celebrating and supporting other women in the book as well as in the podcast. And my hope and my prayer is that these three pieces of advice will be helpful to you in one way or another. Number one, build confidence in yourself and work hard at finding your own success and happiness. That way, you won't have to feel bad when you hear about someone else's good news. You won't feel less than because truth is, feeling less than is the real reason people become envious or they begin feeling jealous in the first place. It also goes back to that old saying about how in order to love someone, you must first learn to love yourself. And then in that same vein, if you want to be happy for other women, you must also find happiness deep within your own soul. Because not only is finding happiness an inside job, it is also the only way you will ever find peace. But more than anything, if you don't find happiness and you never arrive at a point in your life where you can truly be happy for other women, you will continue to block your own blessings. You will struggle unnecessarily. So please make a conscious effort and a decision to be genuinely happy for your sisters who have found great success and then work as diligently and as hard as you possibly can to create your own success and contentment. Number two, be loyal to other women. Being loyal to our spouses and other family members is a given, but we should also be loyal to our fellow sisters. We should be their loudest cheerleaders and we should speak highly of them to everyone around us. Because while in the past, many of us may have been guilty of speaking negatively about other women behind their backs, or at least I know I have, it is as wrong as wrong can be. It's one of the worst things we can do but with God's help, we don't have to continue on that particular path. We can become so much better than that. We can become loyal to all women and begin loving them and celebrating them in the exact same way we want to be loved, celebrated, and treated. We can motivate them, compliment them, and remind them on a regular basis that not only are we proud of them, but that we will support them from the very beginning to the very end. And number three, encourage other women to be the best they can be. Because there are times when the only reason some women aren't being the best they can be is because they don't know any better. Sometimes it is simply because no one has ever told them how to do things any differently than the way they've always, always done them. Sometimes it may simply be as easy as you offering suggestions and recommendations that will help them in ways that they never even knew they could be helped. For example, if you see another woman doing well at something, but you also know that if she improved on say one or two minor things, she could be even more successful, then you have an obligation to reach out to her. Yes, it would certainly be easier to just critique her actions or words and discuss them with others when she's not around, you know, as I was saying before, behind her back, but that won't help her. 
which is the reason you must take the responsibility of letting her know personally and privately about what it is she can do to become better. I will admit though, that there have been times when I haven't always done this myself because not everyone can receive constructive criticism or they may not believe they need to improve upon anything at all. But when I know for sure that another woman wants to become the best she can be, I am glad to offer any advice I can. Because in the end, what we should want is to see that woman operating in total excellence. We should encourage her and lift her up a thousand times over. And we should feel honored about doing it. Because remember, when she wins, we all win. And that in and of itself should be reason enough alone to celebrate other women. And then finally, I just want to leave a scripture with you that relates to this topic. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Psalm chapter 20, verse five, New Living Translation. So again, thank you all so much for this wonderful opportunity. I am so beyond grateful and I am wishing all of God's blessings upon each of you always. Comments, everybody? Yeah. As one of our participants said, powerful. And really a great way to uh, summarize um, our program. A lot of the ideas we shared today. Absolutely. I just want to tell everyone that we do have prizes and we will be selecting four recipients of these prizes um, from the participant email list. And I will be mailing them to you. The first prize is a collection of three beautiful journals for you to plan your strategy, to move forward, to journal your feelings and ideas. And then we have two copies of Kimberla Lawson Roby's book. And we have this planner, a 12 month dated planner featuring these beautiful women from diverse backgrounds on the cover for you to use in planning your life, may it be a good one. May you unite with your sisters and be blessed. And we thank you so much for joining us. Um, any final thoughts from our final words, Michelle? I'm turning it over to you. Um, yes, um, well, I just, this is a very, very wonderful um, presentation tonight. Um, we had some great speakers and we really enjoyed the audience because they had some really interesting questions that they put into the chat and to, in the Q&A. Um, and, and what, what, uh, what the, um, Kimberly Lawson Roby spoke, that was very powerful, words to live by. Um, are there any final questions or anything, or comments or anything? Well, thank you all. For being here. Thank you all so much for the opportunity to, first of all, be on the panel with all these wonderful sisters. I really appreciate it more than you would ever know. I just don't have the words. And thanks to all who participated and those who hopefully will be able to see this after it's over. And special thanks to Kimberla Austin Roby for her presence as well. Love all of her books and just her spirit was precious. And she summed up pretty much everything that we talked about, which I think was awesome as well. And I say that we should just continue to be our sister's keeper and take care of ourselves and them also. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Thank have you. a wonderful evening. All right. Good evening. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Always sister, always friends, let's stay real close till the end.
you're giving me chance to let you call. 